All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, we're going to talk today about Shotkey Sh Hall Reed uh, SHR recombination theory in, uh, in a semiconductor crystal. And uh, we left off last time talking about mobility. I talked a little bit about how this works in the last lecture in the very beginning, but we're kind of going to go through it again. Uh, like I said before, uh, silicon germanium are, uh, and germanium are indirect band gap semiconductors. That means that uh, in order uh, you know, for an uh, electron to move into the conduction band and create an electron hole pair, uh, it needs to overcome some change in momentum. Uh, which, uh, so the um, likelihood of this happening is, is very small. But uh, electron hole pair generation is like the fundamental, uh, most important part of uh, stuff like photovoltaics and, and LEDs and lasers. And a lot of this stuff is, you know, it's made from, uh, made from silicon. So, you know, how, how are these uh, recombinations, you know, and, and generations happening uh, due to light? You know, and, you know of course, because a gener generated electron, you know, you know, some generation at G, you know, uh, you know these, these uh, phonons come in with some, uh, you know, some um, energy HV. Right, which must be greater than or equal to the band gap uh, in order to create some electron hole pair, like so, boom, boom, just like that. However, um, you know, the re the way that this process takes place in semiconductors is through something called uh, recombination centers, and uh, in semiconductors like silicon, germanium, uh, just during the standard processing, uh, impurities can get introduced. You know, and in the case of silicon, it's, it's generally gold. You know, the gold atom, you know, very small amount of gold atoms get, uh, somehow get diffused into the lattice and, and, uh, and stay there and create this, uh, this energy level, this what we call a trap energy level, which is approximately halfway up the band gap. Right? Here's our conduction band and here's our valence band. And um, so what happens is in order for electron hole pairs to be created and recombined, you know, uh, one you know, electron hole pair is created and an electron moves up here, leaving a hole right here, and then this electron must again move here up to here. Furthermore, for recombination, the electron must move uh, back down here to the, uh, to the trap band, right, where it, gets, where it gets trapped, and then it leaves uh, nothing here, just a vacancy, and then, and then comes back down here, recombines the hole, and we get recombination, right? And so uh, we're going to go over the rates of how this takes place, and we're going to kind of uh, uh, show a general derivation of what this recombination is right here. So we know generation, uh, G of N, has to, the rate in which carriers are generated has to come from some outside source, such as light, uh, temperature. You raise the temperature of the lattice, you're going to create electron hole pairs. Uh, but then they'll, you know, they'll re you know, how fast are they going to recombine us to do with this, you know? And we know generally uh, for, uh, you know, an N-type semiconductor, your minority carriers are holes. You know, holes don't want to exist inside an N-type semiconductor, so they tend to recombine. You know, similarly for a P-type semiconductor, the electrons are minority carriers. And you, you introduce an electron created by some sort of outside source in, in, a, in a sea full of holes, they're going to want to recombine with the holes, right? And how that uh, takes place has to do with this RN right here. And we're going to go through that right now. So uh, there are five, four different uh, mechanisms in this... Uh, Shockey Hall re recombination. And the first one is going to be called the rate in which uh, electrons are captured. Right? So we start here. We'll call this our trap band, this our conduction band, and this our valence band. You know, this is step one, this is step two. So the first thing that happens is you have an electron up here, right? And then it loses energy and falls back down to this trap state. And then we just have an electron up here, down trap here, and then nothing right there. So there's no more mobile carriers in the in the, uh, in the conduction band. You know the rate at which this takes place. Well, there's some quantum mechanic constant they call CEC. Some books might call it something else. Times uh, number of electrons n in the valence band, which is just equal to n C E to the E F minus uh, E C over K T, which we already you know got before. So this is there has to be some electron in the uh, conduction band times nt, density of these trap states, right, times f, which, or times 1 minus f, which is the probability of a, uh, a state in the, uh, in the trap band not being occupied. So when we talk about f, our Fermi function in this case, we're talking about, about it in terms of the trap band, right? So in order for this electron to move down here, there has to be an available state for it, right? Um, okay, so uh, that's... Um, we call that uh, 
uh, electron capture, right? Well, what about if a electron is in the trap band and it moves up to the conduction band? And we get this, even the state right here. Well, that uh, we call, that rate we call the um, electron emission rate, right? Because an electron, you know, is emitted from the trap band to the conduction band, and now we have another mobile carrier that can move back and forth, right? Well, as before, we're gonna have, we have some constant, which is figured out, you know, it's a quantum mechanic number or value, you know, times n prime. n prime is equal to number of uh, electrons that are in the trap band. Right, uh, it's electron density in the trap band, right? So there, ha there has to be an electron here in order for it to move up to here. And that n prime is equal to um, nc, effective density states in the uh, conduction band times the trap energy minus the uh, conduction band energy over kt, right? And similarly, also have to have a number of density of um, of, uh, of uh, trap states uh, times the Fermi function f. Yeah. So this is the probability that that uh, the trap band has a filled state, and this is the number of electrons that are in those states. You know, in, in some filled state, and um, and so this needs to be satisfied. So, you know, that needs to be satisfied in order for an electron to move up here. So uh, so we need you know available state in the conduction band, an occupied state in the trap band. Right. So. Uh, now we go into something else. Now we look at uh, what we call hole, uh, hole capture. Right. So uh, let's look at you know look at it like this, right? Just as before, right? Conduction band, trap band, and uh, valence band, right? It starts out with an electron being up here in the trap band, and then it comes down here and recombines with some hole in the valence band, and then, I mean, it's recombined, so it's just not there anymore. It's part of the, it's part of the crystal lattice. It's not, it's not mobile anymore. So the hole is gone, right? And uh, I mean, I'll just draw the electron down here. So, right, there's a hole down here, and goes into that space where the hole is, right? Well, what do we need to be satisfied for that? Well, we have just before you have some constant, we call hc, right, times p, right? So that means, because there has to be a hole in the, in the valence band, Right, in order for this to come down, and of course the number of states in the trap band times once again uh, f. Right, so probability of a state in the trap band being filled is f right there. Okay, and furthermore, last but not least, uh, hole emission. Right, so now we have this electron right here, and what happens is. You know, just as, all this stuff is happening just because of random thermal energy inside the lattice, right? Uh, this moves up here into the trap band, and now we have a hole in the valence band and a, um, you know, an electron in the trap band. So now we have a mobile carrier in the valence band. Well, how does that happen? Well, just as before, we've got some constant, He, times P prime. What is P prime? P prime is number of uh, holes that are in... Um, the trap band. And it's just like this equation right here, except now P prime is equal to NV exponential EV minus ET over KT. Right? So there needs to be a, a hole here in the, uh, in the trap band for this uh, uh, electron to go to. Right? And that's what that P prime is. Again, we need the trap density NT. And now we need 1 minus F. Right? So this state, this means we need an empty state in the trap band. We need some hole in the trap band, and you know density of uh, of um, of um, states, uh, density of these trap states uh, right there. So that's what we have here. This is you know the uh, the whole process: electron capture, electron emission, hole capture, hole emission. Right? So it still doesn't give us a value for R, right? Well, we find actually at equilibrium, um, you know, with no outside energy at steady state, you know, or that nothing's changing over time, that our net recombination rate, we call U, is equal to REC minus REE, 
which is equal to our hole capture minus the rate of, of uh, hole emission, right? Electron capture minus electron emission is equal to hole capture minus hole emission. Uh, so this is at steady state, you know, no, no outside force, right? So when we uh, set these two together, you know, uh, you can do the math on your own. We get, uh, you know, at least the, the left side, you know, we get, or I'm sorry, at least the right side, we get this value, um, whereas we have nt, np minus ni squared, C, uh, electron capture times C of uh, hole capture constant over C, electron capture, N plus N prime, right? Plus C, hole capture, times P plus P prime, right? So N and P are these, um, you know, we can think of it as, uh, you know, N, you know, is equal to N naught plus some N one, right? Or P is equal to P naught plus uh, N plus uh, P one, right? So, uh, you know, N one and P one are these, uh, you know, generated electrons and, and holes that, that occur uh, in this uh, in the lattice, right? And um, you know, M prime, of course, is you know the uh, you know what's occupied in, in, the, in the trap state, right? So um, we can simplify this, erase this now, take one last look at it. Right? We can simplify this U term, right? And consider just uh, oh, by the way, N naught and P naught, you know, these could be your doping. If you assume 100% ionization, N naught and P naught could be your doping, you know. Uh, so if we had an N-type semiconductor, uh, we can simplify this by going through a couple steps to just be uh, P1 minus P naught over tau P, right? Where tau, tau P, well, I should, and then, and then for, uh, this is for N type, and this is for P type. Our net recombination, N1 minus N naught over tau N. Tau N and tau P are proportional to one over the doping and T, or the, uh, the trap density times C, E, C, right? So if we have a uh, large amount, uh, oh yeah, the tau is called the net recombination length time. You know, this has nothing to do with relaxation time, which we looked at before, mean, mean free time uh, between, uh, between collisions. This tau is about recombination. How long is the carrier gonna last on average in a lattice before it recombines and with a, with a um, uh, recombines? Um, so for tau p is uh, you know your whole minority carrier lifetime. Tau n is your uh, electron minority carrier lifetime, right? So if we have a lot of these trap states, you know we have a very small uh, uh, recombination lifetime, right? So the carriers aren't going to last a long time. You know, what if you have a solar cell? You know, a solar cell you need uh, the carriers to last a long time, as long as they possibly can, uh, until they until they reach uh, the other side of the junction. You know, you don't you don't want to recombine right away, otherwise you're wasting energy. You know, but fortunately this happens a lot in silicon. That's why silicon, uh, you know, silicon um, uh, solar cells are so inefficient. But they're really cheap to make, so that's why we keep making them out of that. You know, you, you can make them out of gallium arsenide and be very efficient, but you know, they, they would cost you know one, like a thousand dollars or something. You know, and, um, silicon's cheaper, but but um, you know the number of trap states. Uh, if it's if it's very low, then we have a much uh, longer recombination lifetime. There's a lot of other things that affect tau, like like you know doping. If it, if doping is very high, you know it, you're going to have a less better chance of recombination. Right? Uh, if a holes if a hole is in a highly n-doped material, it's going to re want to recombine really really fast. You know, and uh, you know this n1 or p1 is not going to last very long before it recombines and goes back to equilibrium, which is just n equals n naught. Um, so this can be rewritten as R P or R, yeah, R P and R N. So for this up here, for the continuity equation, we can run G is some outside energy, uh, which we got to find some from, from something else, like a like a light or or, or something, and then R N is uh, generated uh, or is the uh, is the um, rate at which these uh, electrons and holes recombine. You know, for in this case, this is in terms of N, so this would be the rate at which your uh, electrons recombine with holes in a p-type semiconductor. So an electron 
in P type lattice. Okay, so that's all we're going to talk about with Shockey Hall Reed theory. Uh, there are other theories of recombination in semiconductors. There's uh, the Auger. Uh, auger electron, or OJ electron, they call it, or, or an electron, um, you know, that's in a lattice, and this is only, this is only really happens in, in low uh, band gap semiconductors, but, you know, if, um, you know, if your electron's up here, it can move back down here, and, you know, this, so this change in energy here, you know, in this, in this high energy state, this hot electron, as we call it, will create a change in energy right here, and if, if this delta is big enough, then it'll just create another electron hole pair. So that means that you know this this distance has to be the same as this distance. So if you got something like gallium nitride, where it's like you know very very large band gap semiconductor, it's it's very very unlikely that it's going to happen. Something like maybe germanium, it's it's a little more realistic, you know, 0.66 electron uh, uh, band gap. So uh, but you know, um, shock, uh, SHR theory is uh, pretty much the most common in um, in semiconductors, and then for uh, Direct band against uh, semiconductors. It's you know much much simpler process, but uh, that's all we're going to talk about for now. So stay tuned. We're going to get into some uh, applications of the uh, of the continuity equation, and uh, and then you can see how it's not as scary as it looks once you start you know cutting out all the things you don't need. So that's all we got. Thanks.